Would you like to work closer to home, save money on gas, and be rewarded for your hard work and attendance? Then Belicio Foods is looking for you. That's right, Belicio Foods is now hiring for multiple positions and shifts with great employee benefits, an on site health clinic, competitive wages, and advancement opportunities. Belicio Foods is a company that truly values their employees. Apply online at Beliciofoods.com slash careers. At Vinton County National Bank, we believe in supporting the areas where we live and work. Now, we'd like to honor those who also serve our communities. Our new Community Champions account is especially for first responders, veterans, active military, and anyone employed in the fields of healthcare or education. This account offers rewards, discounts, and other benefits to those who give so much to others. Vinton County National Bank, rewarding those who serve. Good morning, everyone. Happy rainy Wednesday. It's a rainy hump day, but that's okay. <laughs> um, the grass will be growing and all of this stuff. Maybe it will suck the pollen down to the ground. I don't know. But anyway, welcome to the morning show right here on Main Street TV, where we have two very special guests this morning. And we are going to be talking about the Wellston Rotary and also the Wellston Rotary Show which will be coming up, is it this weekend? This weekend. Wow, already, I can't believe it. Um, so first off, would you all introduce yourself so our guests know, or so our viewers know who you are? Well, I'm Susie Emmert, and a member of the Wilson Rotary Club, and in the show. Hi, I'm Tim Jackson, former president of the Wilson Rotary Club. That's right, and uh, let's see, I got to come and hang out with you guys, I don't know, it seems like it was yesterday but it was a few years ago now one of your meetings and um it was so much fun yes. you guys are so welcoming and um got to talk about kind of the history of what we do here and such good questions and you guys are just such a fun group but we're the singing group too yes you are the singing club they um yes they sang all kind of songs <laughs> so fun fun so but we'll talk about um the wellston rotary too i would love to talk about that but then, of course, the Rotary Show, which is coming up, and it is the 70th, is correct. what I'm yes. told. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that? The, the first Rotary Show was in 1947. So I know if you do the math, it's off a little bit. Yeah. But there were seven years that they couldn't have it for various reasons or sure. didn't have it. Yeah. So, But this is the 70th. You know, world wars and COVID and mm -hmm. things like that happened. So pack up your troubles. I saw that. And... Pete was kind enough to give me kind of a little story that he had run in the paper about, or is going to run in the paper, about the history. And, of course, the show will be directed by our good friend Dorothy Reepinoff, mm -hmm. who is, um, shall we say, been there, done that a couple of times. Right. Yes. Very, very talented yes. lady. And um, just keeps everybody in line, which is very, very good. But, well, let's talk a little bit about... Um, the Wellston Rotary as a whole, and then we'll get into um, maybe the the uh, show here in a little bit. Okay. Um, <coughs> actually, Wellston Rotary Club was started initially as the Wellston Businessman's Club. Businessman's. Businessman's. Yeah. Businessman's Club. Not business persons. No. Businessman's that Club. That must have been a few years ago. 100 years ago. <laughs> was it really? That was in, in, wow. in 1923. Um. They first decided to join Rotary uh, September 11th of 23, and then they were inaugurated into Rotary International. That's 1923. Yeah, 1923. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> well, you know, when you're old, you don't think about me. Um, and they were inaugurated um, that same month on the 21st of September of 1923. So, so. 100 years ago. Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy? Right. So how did it go from being the business man's club to the Rotary? And how has Rotary, was Rotary a man's club at one point or was it? Um, Paul Harris founded the Rotary Club in 1905 in Chicago. Okay. And it was a businessmen's organization for a few years. Okay. And then a few years later, it became a fraternal type male club. Then it became a integrated Sex club. Basically. Later Sex, on. Yes, yes, correct. Yeah. 
And it's just kind of growing from there to be international. Now there's chapters in every state, every town across the world, and it's just a fantastic organization. It is. And of course, Rotary, uh, what service over self, I think mm -hmm. is, is the, yes. the motto and um, always out to help folks along the way, um, whether it be children or um, all kind of different causes. Correct. Their main focus for the last probably 50 years has been eradicating polio, yes. which is our Polio Plus program, which is working phenomenal. There's been few cases in the world in the last few years, and we kind of target those areas with fundraisers for that. For each dollar we uh, raise Rotary International matches that per dollar, and that will be one shot of polio for a child somewhere in the world. That's so good. And, um, you know, it's 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 kind of crazy that we've had vaccines for that for how, how long, and Correct. it still yes. exists. So, um, yeah, we need to make that go bye-bye. Rotary won't go bye-bye. You'll just no. find another cause. No. Correct. Correct. Yes. <laughs> we would love for you to have to find a new cause. We've yeah. started a new cause, actually. It's okay. the Peace Program to Bring World Peace. And each uh, club is putting up a peace poll, and they're partnering with another organization in Rotary. And ours is from Australia, our sister club. So when we de what? dedicated our poll mm -hmm. in Wellston at the park, uh, the one in Australia did theirs at the same time. Yeah, That is yeah. so cool. The, the park that it's in is the Community Garden Park. Okay. Over across the railroad tracks. Well, right across from the depot. Yes. And um, so the peace poll, what, what does that, you know, what's, what's the point of that, I guess? Just to make people aware of world peace and what we can do to improve our, our community and how to be that helping hand for others by offering peace or a helping shoulder or a helping hand. Well, how about we take a bunch of those and stick them on the in, in the middle of Washington D.C. Well, we can yeah. see what can happen. Send send a bunch <laughs> of those to Congress and see what happens. Oh, yes, yes. Maybe they could learn something right. from Rotary. <laughs> bunch of jerks. Anyway, not that we're here to talk politics because we're not. A little bit of trivia. Okay. When um, the Wilson Rotary Club was inaugurated, mm -hmm. there were in nineteen nineteen twenty three. <laughs> There were people that came in from all over the United States on the BNO Railroad, which came through Wellston and stopped at the Wellston Depot. That is so cool. Yes. Yeah. So it was, uh, they, they started out um, funding or having a fund for what they called crippled children at that time. Okay. Um, which now I think is probably more like March of Dimes, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and they also ran a Boy Scout camp. Really? Out on Keystone Road. So cool. At one time. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just kind of a diverse little club. Yeah, and it has evolved, obviously, into so many different mm -hmm. uh, aspects. Um, <clears throat> so you guys have not been members since 1923, as far as I know. Uh, so how long have you all been members? Um, I've been a member since, I believe, 2003. 14. But being a friend of Dorothy's, hi Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs> I've been the, in the Rotary show since I think right about 2007, 2008. Okay. So you got suckered in even before you were in the Rotary. And that's something <laughs> cool to know that you don't have to be part of the Rotary right. to be part oh. of the <clears throat> Rotary show. Yeah. A lot of people think they have to be part of the Rotary, but no, we, we'd like to have everyone come out. Yes. You know, we we want to get our numbers back up as far as the show. It is a big money maker. Yes. And we want to provide a really good quality show. Not that this show won't be. But we'll yeah. Talk about that in well, so here's the thing. And, and uh, Tim, we'll get to you and okay. your service here in just a moment. But here's the thing. All service clubs, I don't care who you are or where you are, were certainly um, – affected if not decimated by the this pandemic that we had mm -hmm. and you know people weren't allowed to meet and people went their separate ways and it's it's by all accounts all clubs uh been a little bit tough to get membership back and i don't it's been very i guess hard. i'm speaking for you but i think that you would agree with that that it's yes, been very, very difficult and people you know i i feel like they've just changed their priorities perhaps mm -hmm. but the thing is why would you not want a priority to be serving others and helping others? Yes. So, you know, if you can right. 
pick one thing to do, I would think that being part of a service organization would be a really good thing to focus on. So, um, Tim, how long have you been in this the- This is my 12th the, year. I was in okay. the Welsh, I was in the Jackson Club for three years and went to the Wellston Club. Okay. And there uh, are different correct. clubs there's, throughout our area. Correct. There's multiples. Our district is 6690, which has 12 clubs in the district, Galpolis, Portsmouth, Jackson. Can you be part Wellston. of mul multiple clubs or you, do you have to pick one or the you other? You usually pick one, but you can go to any meeting you want to attend any okay. club you want. But usually you have one home club. That is your okay. your actual membership through. Okay. But they recognize everybody. Everybody's welcome to come to any meeting. And I was president during the height of the pandemic three Ooh. years ago. So it really made it fun for meetings. We became the masters of Zoom. Yes. We did a lot of Zoom meetings. But we did some in-person stuff, too. We social distance. Seemed to work out really well. I don't think we had anyone come down with COVID during it. But we, we had a good time during it just to meet, to see each other, and wish everybody well during that time. Yeah. If nothing else, it was fellowship for, you know, for folks that were kind of, we're just stuck at home mm -hmm. um, and, and didn't get to see your friends and, you know, even family members. Yeah. We had our core group that met at uh, Grace Baptist Church mm -hmm. and did the meeting there. And then everybody joined us by Zoom and it worked out pretty well because we were able to distance and have everything set up there for us. Very cool. And the great thing about it is we all were forced to learn how to use Zoom. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At that point, we were all forced to learn technology that even if we didn't want to. That, that is correct. And Zoom's probably the easiest one to use. So we really enjoyed it. But it made everything available, see what we could go, what plans we could make, because everything was kind of limited on our funds we could do that year. And we just tried to figure out what we could do to keep the club, club growing with members and stuff. Sure. Absolutely. So what are some of the things that you all have been up to uh recently oh it's been busy oh. um basically since february i've been working on the rotary show mm -hmm. we've been working on the field of heroes which is coming up memorial day weekend which is you guys create a monster with yes. that thing and that dorothy that was dorothy's she idea was, yeah she thank was you dorothy yes. you're ahead of that uh, it is amazing we'll be back here on the 30th of this month to talk about the show okay. about the field of heroes okay great. so we're excited that's been a that's a large thing Whew. Uh, did a bean dinner, chili dinner at the football game in the fall, and you got to see lots of people that time. And just working on different things. Our Valentine's dinner was a success. We had on Scotty's the first and had okay. a sellout crowd. It was packed and had a real good time with that. And all of our fundraising we do is for our organization, basically for scholarships. We try to give at least six scholarships to Wilson High School graduating students. That's super mm -hmm. cool. And again, you know, service over self, we're talking about the money that you guys raise is going to help whether it be the polio cause or local children or whatever, it's always going back into the community. Correct. The right. largest portion of our stuff basically goes back into our community itself. Very, very yes. good. Which brings us to the show that's this weekend, which is one of your largest fundraisers. And y'all are doing something right because it's now been around for 70 years. And it would be more had there not been, as I said, global pandemics and world wars and, you know, things like that that right. kind of put a damper on, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. celebrations such as the Rotary Show. But let's talk about um, 70 years ago. How did this thing become a, a thing? Well, um, they had decided they wanted... Uh, like a bigger fundraiser, something to bring things in. And of course, extravagant. Yeah, very extravagant. Yeah. So the first, very first Rotary show was in December of 1947, was held on the first and the second. Okay. Of December. Um, they, uh, um, just a, just a, a lot of songs, a lot of tri and there's a lot of traditions that have kept, we have one song that we sing at the end. Okay. That um, it's been sung the past 70 years. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and um, the first, the very first production was produced by two gentlemen from Lancaster that were part of a uh, minstrel association. They went around and put on minstrels. So they're the ones that came down and do that. Okay. So... Not to interrupt you, but I'm going to anyway. Um, <laughs> is is this a rotary thing, or is this just a Wellston rotary Wellston thing? Wellston rotary. Wellston. Like, so, so you all, I mean, this isn't like something that rotaries do across the country. Yeah, this is a I, club I, specific. I, Very cool. I think they do, other rotary clubs do have like um, performances and things like that, but this one has been a traditional. Within, well, within this state and, and other places, we're known as the singing club. 
So there you go. Well, when you have Dorothy reaping off and, and so many yeah. other folks involved, you can't help but be yeah. the singing club. Yeah. And I was telling you, in 1959, they went on the road with the show. No way. Yeah. They went to seven different county fairs. Really? And um, I can remember, my mom told me I was three. Okay. okay. So I'm not really telling my age here, but... <laughs> it was a few I years can, ago I can remember when my dad and my brother were in it <clears throat> and I can remember being over in the, the fairgrounds grandstands watching and I remember seeing my brother dressed as a woman walk across <laughs> stage in a skit but <laughs> I, I may have stood up and said something that probably isn't appropriate to say probably not yeah but um, yes that, that was my earliest recollection so that was probably 50, 1957, 1958. Wow. Very fun. Yeah. So cool. So, um, let's see, without getting myself in trouble, things have changed over the years. Political correctness mm -hmm. has come yes. into our lives, um, shall we say, with a vengeance. Mm -hmm. um, so things have had to change a little bit. The things that people took tongue in cheek, I think, years ago right. are offensive today right we used to have the the end men used to be in blackface yeah i mean it and, was a thing and, right. and it, it was not to make fun of anybody it was it, to have fun yeah and it was more, you no know, it, it does and it, i think it was more to i mean i kind of look at it as as um paying homage yes. to yes. Yes. the black culture right but I understand <clears throat> yeah. why it would be offensive in right. today's world. So that, that kind of stuff ended. Right. That, that um, ended in 1994. Yeah. So that was the last time that was done. Um, it always been, it, traditionally up until about 2003, it had been held at the Central School Building, which now is Community Action. Oh, okay. And um, also Adina Health Center has a clinic on the other side of it. Okay. Um, 2003, we went to the middle school, and 2011, we went to the high school. Okay. So ever Those since... Great venues, yes, by yeah, the way, to have, have it. Right. So actually, from the very first show, Wellston City Schools let let them use the auditorium. Very cool. So, yeah, it's it's just, uh, it's amazing. Um You've probably heard about the Hercules Pants Factory. Everybody in Wellston always knows about the, the Pants Factory. The old Pants Factory yes. lot. That's what you hear. A the lot. old Pants Factory. Yeah. Um, I didn't they, know it was Hercules Pants. Yeah. Hercules Pants Factory. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I worked three three months there between high school and, and college and decided college was for me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure you did. <laughs> but uh, they used to make the costumes. Really? Mm -hmm. And Wellston High School uh, art class used to do the backdrops. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, so now do you guys do all of that now, or how does that work? Or we, do you just kind of wing pretty, it? We pretty much come up with our own costumes for skits or whatever. Um, we do still do, we still wear the vests, mm -hmm. the blue vests, have the little black armbands, yep. you know. Uh, we've kind of done away with the hats, but uh, we wear the white gloves. Very so. cool. So what are some, yeah, I was going to ask you, like, what are some of the traditions that have, you know, carried over all of these years? Well, the, the one song, it was originally called um, Broadway's Tame Street. So, and it just talked a little bit about uh, Wellston, um, kind of back in the day. Okay. You know, and we just carried it through. Um, we're doing one number at the end um and it's it's to the tune of thanks for the memories okay and if i'm not mistaken i think the late great bobby walton mm -hmm. was instrumental in coming up with that so um i don't want to tell a lot of things that's in it it's kind of a long song but it it really graphs clear up to we've we've had a couple of verses uh -huh. that makes it relevant to today like our 150th very cool so there you go yeah. so a lot a lot of traditions um updated version there mm -hmm. uh dana wiseman is our dana lockard wiseman is our interlocutor 
Yeah, I'm glad you said the word because I, I, Pete and I just stumbled over it horribly yesterday. <laughs> if I think about it, I can't say yeah, it. Don't, so. Yeah, don't. Yeah, it's kind of like gene, genealogical for yes. me. I, I have the worst time saying that word. But anyway, <laughs> so yeah, so tell us what that is. Well, she's the, like the MC. Yeah, the interlocutor is the MC. Comes out, introduces the the acts, gives a little bit of uh, talk in between, introduces the end men. Which is always special. Our in men are so. Let's kind of talk about all of the different positions that that people hold during uh, the Rotary show because those are certainly steeped in tradition as well. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you have the in men, and this year it is Tim Jones, uh-huh. um, Greg Sheets, Kayla Saltzman. So we're not all not men, men necessarily. And Tyler Edwards. Uh huh. And they have got some really good acts. Tim Jones is phenomenal. Yes. He comes up with stuff every year, and you think, how does this man do it? You know. And they are kind of the comic relief of mm-hmm. the right. whole yes. of the yes. whole show, and and that's kind of their job is yes. to tell funny jokes and corny jokes and all of the all of the stuff. Oh yeah, and some of the dad jokes leak in there. Yeah. And yeah. then each one of them maybe have a song or something that they perform, which. Um, again, I don't want to give anything away. No, I want yes. you. You really need to come. That's exactly right. And then there's the um, the choir. What what is that called? Well, we're called the circle. The circle. The I couldn't circle. think of that. Yes. yes. And it's comprised of men and women. Um, we sing. Well, we have a lot of different songs, and we're doing a lot of the songs that were sung back in 1947 at the first show. That's super cool. And I know um, in reading um, the article that Pete had written, the theme is kind of like pack up your troubles. And I think that's so cool. And um, he was saying that many of the songs were from the inaugural show, um, including pack up your troubles in your old kit bag. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to be happy, smile, darn you, smile, shoe fly pie, and apple pan dowdy. Apple pan dowdy. Didn't know that one, but, um, so super duper cool that you all, um, have, are kind of paying homage to that, um, yeah. show way back when. And, um, how do people get tickets and all that? Tickets are available at the door. It's $2 general entry. And then there's a $10 ticket that gets you a VIP table with snacks and drinks during the show. Those are available at the door or also you can go on our Facebook page and get tickets also, but it's easier just at the door. Come see me at the door. I'll be at the door. We're greeting you all. <laughs> so, and we just hope everyone comes out this weekend, Friday and Saturday, 7 p.m. Wellison High School in the Capitorium. At the high school. Yeah, so high school. I know it gets a little confusing. Some things are held at the middle school. Yeah. Some right. things are. So this is at the high school, which is really super right. cool. Now I do want to say that we have one member that was in the original. Can you believe that? He was in the original. Now, he wasn't seen, but he was in it. Don Souders. Don Souders was in the first one. He was in high school, and I believe he was a senior, possibly. Um, Unbelievable. The The course was just a little weak, so they had uh, some of the glee club, the men's glee club, sing behind the curtains. Oh, with, how fun. So, but technically, he was in the very first one. And he's only, I think he said he only missed five due to being in the service and, you know, different things. Well, and of course, COVID. And we'll excuse like that. you for that, buddy. Yeah. And then we have Martha Darrow, who has been, I believe she said 56 years. Wow. Connie Hendershot's got 47 years. This and is so, so we've, just, fun. we've got people clear from there down to this is their first year. Very cool. Now, how do you get to participate in this? You know, Just sign up for it. Obviously, it's kind of a little bit late yeah. now, but for this if, year. But if you want to do, you know, next year, or... they, they posted on Facebook, and I think there was also a newspaper article this past year yes. when practices are going to be happening. They were at St. Peter and Paul's. Just come join us next year. Mm-hmm. The show is going to be moved to the fall for next year, so it's going to be in November. It's going to be a fall show next year. Okay, so like a year and a few months yeah, from correct. now, not yes. like a few months no, from now. a year and a few months. Okay. And then it'll, it'll probably start in the summer rehearsals, and people can sign up then and just come join and have a good time. That's right. And again, you don't have to be part of the Wellston Rotary oh, right. um, to be uh, in this show, but it is to raise funds 
for the, the projects that you all do. Well, I'll gladly take right. you as a member too. We can we can sign you yeah. up that day. Absolutely. And what do you have to do to become a Rotary Rotarian, if you will? Just come and be interested in joining. We'll bring you to a meeting, let you see what's going on. Um, we'll put you through the initiation. Correct. We'll, we'll circle your fat rolls <laughs> with um, permanent markers. And Fill out an application and we'll have you come join us. Beat you with sticks <laughs> and all that. Yeah. Make you sing. Make you sing. You got to sing. <laughs> You don't have to be a good singer. No, you just no, have to sing. No, just sing. <laughs> you know, it was funny. I um I was asked to speak at the um Circleville Rotary not too long ago. And um they sang as well, which I thought was really fun. And um the girl that had asked me to come, they wanted me to talk about beer and stuff like that, but uh, which is my other hat. <laughs> but um yeah, she's like, you don't because <laughs> <laughs> they were just singing up a storm as well and i was like oh, oh thank god because i don't know any of the songs you know yeah, they it relaxes you at a meeting gets all those troubles away for a little while it mm -hmm. does be happy eat a nice meal and that's what i was like so i thought wow what a great just as i felt so comfortable coming to mm -hmm. your uh group meeting um same with them it was just like people of all walks of life getting together having a lunch and just having a good time for an hour. And mm -hmm. that's awesome. If anybody out there would like to come to our, one of our meetings and speak to be a guest speaker, just get a hold of any Rotarian in Wellston. We'll sign you up. We're always looking for speakers to show yeah. us what you do for the community. Absolutely. And um, tell us a little bit about the meetings. Um, we're, we're kind of joking about the singing, but not really. I mean, there <laughs> is singing involved. Uh, you don't have to be a good singer to come, but um, what 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 do the meetings entail? How long are they? When are they? That kind they of thing? Are, we have a floating schedule. One's on a Monday evening, and the next one's on a Wednesday afternoon at Grace Baptist Church. Okay, they meet at noon. Um, they last about an hour, hour and fifteen minutes, give okay. or take, depends on the the agenda. Uh, we have a social meeting once a month where we go out and do something. Some things they've done have gone to wineries. We've gone to, uh, had a painting party at uh, Darling's Creation. Okay. It's a little social thing for everybody to get out, meet everybody, and Very to take good. our show on the road to other places that this is Rotary. Nice mm -hmm. to meet you. Come see us. We'll come see you. Love that. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Very good. So uh, get a hold of any Rotarian um, or just show up at one of the meetings as well. Mm -hmm. And do you post those on yes, social they're all, media? Yes, on the Facebook. Mm -hmm. We have the Wells Rotary Facebook page has all the meeting dates. Okay, very good. So you have no uh, excuse not to know when they are. So, okay, let's go over this show one more time because we want everybody to come yeah, this come weekend. And you all are very welcome. And not only is it a fun, fun night, but your money is going, you know, your, your price of admission and the snacks and all that is going to wonderful causes. Yes. Well, the Wellston Band Boosters will be selling the the concessions okay so that'll be funds for them there you go I didn't didn't mention what we call the oleo that's we another we, word i don't yeah, know y'all yeah. go ahead we to we, we have the circle that's where we all sit up on the stage we sing uh -huh. all the songs the end men do things whatever and then we have an intermission and then the comedy skits start uh -huh. yes. and we've got some really really good skits and we've even revived one that was performed at the first one in 1947. You're redoing this. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's so fun. Yes. How yeah. does anyone even remember? Or like know what that that was? It just passed on. It's it's been it's been done a couple other times. Okay. So but it's, it's in tradition, which is amazing. Yeah. yeah. And they also keep but scrapbooks was, of previous shows yes. and oh, events great. and stuff. Yes. And they have it had a program printed, they have the program. Yeah. Very so cool. I don't want to give it away, but yep. Yep. you need to come and see. That's right. It will be a fun, fun night. So Friday and Saturday. Yes. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. at Wellston High School. You can buy tickets at the door. You can get those reserved seats if you like, which does include uh, some snacks and things like that. Right. Get mm -hmm. you up front and, and uh, a signed seat, which mm -hmm. is cool. General admissions, $2. Um, small price for a great night of fun. Doors Absolutely. open at 6, show starts at 7. There you go. So get out and about. Come and see the Wellston Rotary Show. Um, again, the 70th year. Y'all are doing something right if it's been 70 years and it's still going strong. It is still going strong. strong. Absolutely. All right. And again, you want to be a Rotary member. Um, if, if you're not around the Wellston area, there's many, many other uh, Rotary organizations you can join. Um, but the Wellston Rotary is a lot of fun, too.
Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, you guys do a thank great you. job. All right. Well, thank you for coming in. Um, Mr. Dylan, you have a weather forecast. I think Dylan over there has uh, worked up some videos for us. It's, he wasn't here for a few days. We, um, we've we been kind of missing him and some of the stuff that he produces here at uh, Main Street TV. So I think he's been working and, and coming up with some different things to show us uh, about things that Total Media is doing in general, which is really, really yes. fun and cool. Yes. Impressive. We're out and about and doing all kind of great things. So uh, Dylan, you want to do the weather and then we'll come back on the other side of it and talk about some of the things that you have... Uh, you've been up to. All right. Thank you. Thank Appreciate y'all coming in. All right. Uh, today's weather forecast. Here's the deal. It was raining when I came in. So it says 50% chance of rain. I'd say it's more like a hundred percent chance of rain, considering the fact that it was pouring on me as I drove in this morning. Hopefully it moves out. I don't know whether it will or not, but still very, very warm temperatures with highs around 80 degrees, lows down to 55 overnight. Man, it may be nice enough to start thinking about planting some flowers finally, which would be fantastic. Uh, tomorrow on Thursday, looking very nice. Uh, some partly cloudy skies, highs of 81, lows of 58. And then back on Friday, um, a little bit cooler with uh, the 70% chance of rain. Highs around 70 and lows of 45. Saturday and Sunday down around uh, 60 degrees. So, um it's just kind of all over the place, but it is spring and that's what spring tends to do. Hey, and I did want to remind you, speaking of good causes, the Humane Society of Jackson County uh, fundraiser is this coming Saturday, April 20th at the Jackson First Church of the Nazarene. And uh, that's a 251 Pal Drive here in Jackson. And you can buy tickets because this is such a wonderful cause. You can buy tickets for the meet and greet with Bluey and Bingo. So bring your kids. You can meet Spider-Man, Spider-Gwen. Um, who's Miles Morales? Uh, that's like Spider-Man, but from a different universe. Spider-Man from a different universe. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Um, you can take pictures with your children, with all of the characters. And again, you can buy those tickets for this fundraiser on Eventbrite and it's only 10 bucks and you can bring and kids under two are free, but it is a fundraiser for the Humane Society of Jackson County. So please help out your furry friends, bring your kids to this very special event because it is going to be a lot of fun for them. They'll get to meet all of the characters and get their pictures taken with them. Again, that is this coming Saturday, one to four at the Jackson First Church of the Nazarene on Pal Drive here in Jackson. Um, get those <clears throat> tickets at Eventbrite, or you can purchase tickets at the door, $12. Um, so the pre-sale's 10, so you can save a couple bucks there. So, all right, Dylan, what are, what have you been up to, buddy? Okay, so I wanted to show you this real quick. The other day, I believe it was Saturday, we did a bass fishing stream of their tournament and their weigh-ins. But uh, we ran into some technical problems not being able to get Wi-Fi at the lake. It was just such a dead zone. Okay. So I did everything in my power to get us the highest range like speed. So this is what I ended up having to do. <laughs> Shut up. You <laughs> climbed a tree. I climbed a tree. You nut. <laughs> and if you look really closely, let me zoom it in here. You can see that like the whole reason I went up there wasn't because I'm like a monkey or enjoy trees or something. <laughs> I was trying to reach the... Uh, like a good zone for the Wi-Fi. So if you look closely, you can see that there's a router right there. Oh my God, in, in the, the tree. tree. <laughs> You're crazy, buddy. Yeah, I needed to get that service. Did it work? No. <laughs> Shoot. It would have been a better story had it worked. Yeah. But I, I tried to get a service, but it didn't work out so well. But Rodney came in, Porterhouse. And he saved the day and got us a different Wi-Fi hotspot. And since he was there, I went ahead and threw him on screen. And I have a snippet of the episode right here that I'm ready to play. All right, let's get to it. And this whole bass fishing thing is so cool. A lot of the local teams now uh, or our local schools are starting these bass fishing teams and uh, are doing very, very well. So let's get to it. Heard. Uh, uh, earlier, they've been up since about 4 o'clock this morning and hit the road 
to get out here on the waters as early as they could. And, of course, uh, they've been at it all day long. We had our uh, midday uh, weigh-in earlier this morning, about 11 o'clock or so, and uh, we've been waiting patiently for our uh, second weigh-in to get underway. The uh, students have all made their way in with uh, their uh, boat captains and everything. And as we pan around here, we can see some of these folks with us. We can see that they're they're kind of chill. And I know I don't think that the fishing was necessarily all that great this morning, but I guess we can ask some of these guys uh, how the fishing was. What's your name, buddy? Cole Callahan. All right, Cole. So how was your day out on the water? Uh, pretty quiet. I got a change up my game plan as we're heading into the more warmer seasons but the temperatures are fluctuating it's kind of hard to tell exactly what they're doing but uh i didn't catch much today so uh i know there's probably a lot of obstacles coming into this tournament this week i mean uh not only do you know you probably unfamiliar with the lake and the fish itself but i mean the conditions leading into this week with the water the water levels are actually high the the, the water's muddy out there so i mean there's a lot of obstacles you had to work with there yeah, the best thing you can do is just make your bait visible and uh, try to get as much attention to you as you can. But uh, there's something to work on for next week. So uh, with the wind and everything, did that change up your strategy? Were you expecting a calmer day coming into this? Definitely expecting a calmer day. Um, whenever you, you're used to uh, you know pitching on calm water, you only go fishing on those days. I mean, that's just another curveball you have to face. That's something that uh, just all of us have to overcome. So uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, what grade are you in school? I'm a senior uh, involved in 4-H and FFA, uh, getting uh, retiring out of those positions. Um, just really involved in uh, all things uh, animal and sciences and stuff. Awesome. So, so what do you expect to see out of yourself as a future? Because you got graduation probably coming up here pretty soon, huh? Yeah. I plan to go to uh, ATI, OSU. So uh, that's where I'm committed to, and that's where I'm going. And all right, so uh, what's the specific study? Uh, ag business. Ag business. Well, man, we need more of you guys out there. I tell you, you know, honestly, when you think about it, if it wasn't for agriculture, we wouldn't be eating right now, right? That's right. And the same goes for, you know, fishing, farming, anything ag. That's uh, just all ties into it. So you're, are you a big part of the Future Farmers, the FFA? Yeah, just uh, retiring as president in less than a week. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Awesome, man. I was, uh, I was, uh, I think I was president of the FFA. I was vice president, president, Sentinel, got to go to the national convention. That's, that's what's really cool about that. And, you know, they got the FFA that just came back just probably a handful of years ago, actually. And, and it's a growing program still over there too, right? Sure is. Yeah. We got the uh, largest club in Jackson at the moment and uh, we're just happy to have all the members. Well, good, good luck with that, and thanks for being out here and being a part of this today and, and taking the moment to talk with us, and good luck to you the rest of the season, all right? Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, what's your name? Come on up here, buddy. My name's Triton Ridley. What was that again? Triton Ridley. Triton. So, uh, Triton, uh, what grade are you in? I'm in ninth grade. Ninth grade. So, tell me a little bit about your day. How was uh, your day of fishing? Uh, it was pretty good. I had to change up my strategy from a spinner bait and then to a jig to a crank bait, and then I just started throwing top water baits and then i started getting follows but i couldn't get a hook up just couldn't get it to hook up so where, where were you getting the bites were you getting them off in the coves out in the open waters open waters really so uh what, did you have any like equipment that you could see the fish with that you could maybe track them a little bit were you seeing where they were hanging or anything no i couldn't i was just guessing where they were <laughs> so uh, you made a couple of good guesses and maybe not so many other good guesses huh oh yeah definitely well, tell me a little bit about your schooling. So you're a freshman in in in, in school, so uh, you're you're kind of fresh to the whole thing. But you've had a year under your belt, and this is your first year of angling, I'm sure, right? Yes, it is. Tell me what the experience has been like for you so far. Uh, it's been pretty good, and this is going to be my last year bass fishing because I'm moving back to Florida to do some red fishing because my family and stuff. So you so say red fishing? That's a little. That's a whole lot different than bass fishing, huh? It is because you're fishing in salt water. So do you have a lot of experience salt water fishing? I have a little bit. So uh, what's your biggest catch? My biggest catch in salt water has to be a Spanish mackerel. And how big was that? Uh, maybe about 20 to 25 inches. Wow. Was that was that a, a long, long process to reel that one in? It was. It really was. <laughs> a lot of memories from that one. How old were you? I was probably about seven or eight. 
seven or eight. So that's a that's a memory to hold on to for a little while. So I guess it's time to get back down there and, and break that record, huh? Oh, yes, it is. Well, good luck to you the rest of the season, and good luck to you whenever you go back to Florida. And uh, hopefully uh, what you learn here with uh, Coach Strasser will help you out in the future as well, man. All right, thank you. All righty. So uh, speaking of Coach Strasser, I thought I heard his voice around there just a moment ago. He's over, ran over to the truck already. So come on over here, young man. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Gabe Taylor. Gabe, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, what grade are you in? I'm in 11th grade. 11th grade. So you a member of any other projects or uh, programs like uh, the gentleman we just talked to a moment ago? No, just fishing. Just fishing. So tell, uh, is this your is the first year or second year? Second the, year. My second year of fishing, yeah. So tell me a little bit about last year and how it compares to this year and what it feels like. I, I know probably last year it was all fresh and new to you, and this year you got a little bit better of a plan as to what to do because I'm sure you're thinking nationals, right? Yeah, um, well, growing up, I used to fish a lot, um, but we, I took a long break. Uh, last year, we went into it not knowing much of techniques and stuff like that. We had a lot of tournaments where we didn't weigh in, and when we did weigh in, they were real small ones. Um, this year, though, we've uh, we've really put the study down. Um, we've learned a bunch of new techniques. We've been catching bass. Um, so this year's going really well. I'm really excited for this year. Try to go to nationals and then eventually, hopefully, win nationals. So there you go. You know, I'm I'm a hook and worm kind of guy. You know, I just f put a worm on a hook or a bug or something and go out and and hope for what I catch. But you guys are specifically targeting bass out there. That that's got to take a certain skill set. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's a lot different. Um, and even whenever you are targeting bass, you can still catch you know a crappie or a different type of breed of fish that you're not supposed to be having in the live well or anything. But um. Th th I'm thankful for the Lord, actually. Uh, he's helped us out a lot this year. Um, he's kept us safe. He's kept us keeping in fish. Um, and if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here right now. So shout out to my Lord and Savior. Amen, brother. I like to hear that. That's awesome, man. So uh, tell me a little bit about this day. Uh, did You weren't in the early. You started out, I guess, in the afternoon session, of the so midday, I guess, huh? Well, actually, I started out in first flight. Um Strawser needed one more person for his boat, so I fished his boat. We didn't catch anything. I had bites, um, and I went into the second flight, and uh, we came out strong in this flight. I'm not gonna say what. You guys are just gonna have to wait to see. But uh, we uh, we've had a we had a long day. Um, came from a lot of bad areas, uh, bad bad situations today. Um, so, but we came out really good. So. Awesome. So, uh, with the obstacles, I was talking about you know muddy water. The water levels are up. We've had rain the last couple of days. I mean, how did you approach this one this day? Did you have a plan coming into today? Uh, well, we knew it was going to be really windy, so we threw a lot of uh, like crank baits, some chatter baits, some uh, some spinner baits. Um, we had we had luck on all of them. Also, uh, Texas rigging, um, wacky worms, Ned rigs. Basically, the same plan as any other lake. You just got to fish a little bit slower. And uh, you got to pay attention to where, you know, your structures are this time. Because, I mean, as you can see, you know, the water's way above, you know, where it should be. It's already above the sidewalk, so it's a lot different. You can see where, you know, it's flooded at. Um, but we just, you got to keep your head down and fish. There you go, man. That's the only thing I say about it is keep your head down and fish. All right, man. So you're a junior in this year. You got your senior year. Uh, what are you planning? Have you got any plans for the future or anything? Right now, I'm just, I'm focused on the next tournament. Uh, one tournament after another. Um, next year's next year. That's all I can say. I plan on fishing next year. That's all I can say is I plan on fishing next year. I plan on doing a lot better than what I have done already. Um, I plan on improve and just keep fishing. So would you like uh, – you, I, I can see this going somewhere. Do you, are you going to try to use fishing as a catapult onto the next level after school, uh, after high school, I guess, maybe into college, or maybe even further down the road? You Can, can you see that in yourself? Yeah, I can. Um, I want I want to go to college for fishing. That's my plan. Um, eventually going to college for fishing, hopefully going pro. Um, uh, fishing's really a good sport for me. Uh, it, it clears my mind a lot. It's very help. You know, it helps me out a lot. Um, without fishing, I honestly, honestly, I'd probably be at my house right now. You know, being bored out of my mind, not knowing what to do. But I, I got to come here today. I got to be around a bunch of amazing people. Got to be around my family and friends. Um, I'm just, I'm really happy about today. So, 
You're an awesome young man. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you, man. Thank you very much. Just take care of yourself. <laughs> you too, Keep up the faith, man. I love that. So, all right. Is Coach uh, Jeff around anywhere? Has he made his way back into the realm there? He's probably getting things set up. And, oh, look at that. He's getting the scales all set up and getting things ready to go. So, uh, Coach, uh, I know that you're kind of busy, but uh, maybe we can go ahead and uh, steal you to the side just a little bit. Sounds like the, the the team had a pretty good time. I've only had a chance to really talk to a couple of them, but lots of smiles and laughs I'm hearing around here. Yeah, we were able to pick it up a little bit. The wind did die down a little bit more than what they forecasted, so that was good. We had a little bit less wind, and uh, the temp sun came out. The water temperature went up, so I think we got a few more fish this round. And uh, I know there were a few non-keepers caught as well, so I think that uh, – you know, they had an advantage here maybe today with the second flight. Good. I, I was wondering about that because I know they didn't catch much and talking to some of these, seems like they might have got a few more hits. So this will be pretty inter interesting way in, I'm supposing. Yes, should be. And uh, in the first flight, we did have several uh, anglers catch fish in the slot. And what that means is if you catch anything below 12 inches that is above 10, so between 10 and 12, you're allowed to keep that. And then anything 15 or above, you're allowed to keep that. But if it's between 12 inches and 15, which we had like Tyler Eggers and Cohen uh, Davis, they would have brought in four fish to the scales today. So they had four fish that were all in that slot, and we had several other anglers that caught fish in that slot. So that kind of stopped them from being able to bring anything to weigh in, but that's just part of what it is. All righty. So uh, it sounds like, again, weather worked out. I mean, we're in the mid-60s now. What, what was the temps when you guys started this morning? Uh, probably the upper 40s. I think 47, 48 when we first got here this morning. And that wind was a little bit cold. <laughs> I bet a few of them were probably second-guessing that, that early flight. Well, this we'll really be able to test to see, and this was a good test this morning because fishing in a post-cold front situation again this week with the high winds and, you know, first that first flight is really going to help us determine, you know, who wants really to fish that national championship qualifying circuit because it's a little bit longer tournament at day. We have to do it in one flight. It'll be from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. So it's going to be a lot longer, and you may not think a couple hours matters, but you know, being out there on the boat, your back can get tightened up, and then your arms start getting sore from making a lot of casts. And if you're fighting that wind all day long, it can it can be a real a real downer. Abs absolutely, you got you know, it almost sounds like you got to be mentally and almost physically prepared for this. I mean, you know, right diets, right uh, fluids, and everything like that, and maybe even a little working out to keep that arm strength and stuff up. We do some strength training as we do at every night we practice, and we practice three nights a week, and uh, they really don't like that part. But you know, I encourage him to do it at home as well because you got to really have a, a good set of grips or a good grip strength and a good set of strength in your wrists and your arms and your back. And so it's one of those things you really got to learn how to take care of yourself. And we just want to thank Jason Crawford, uh, Chief Athletics Trainer, and he's giving us some strength. All right, well, there you go. Some Jackson Ironman bass fishing, um, a, a look-see at what they do. And I think that is so very, very cool um, and such a really fun new sport that's being done at uh, both the collegiate level and the high school level right now. So hopefully continues on. And some very, very talented kids here in our area uh, even made it to the nationals. I think a couple of teams did. So very, very neat. Um, all right. And speaking of sports, let's head on over to where, Pike County. All right. And we're doing uh, some live baseball games over there. So want to thank them for that. And uh, let's see what they're doing baseball wise over in Pike County. Uh, yeah. Two down top of the first. High and inside ball one. One and oh. Here's a pitch. He thought about it. Check swing. Got They're going to call it a strike. Generous strike call on that yeah. one, in my opinion, fellas. One, one. Bases are loaded. Here comes a pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike two. If Circleville can limit the damage to only one run in this inning, that is definitely a victory. That's a big plus for them. Big plus. I feel like their pitcher's really settled down here. Yeah. He's starting to find his groove. 
Here's a pitch. High. Ball two. So we're even here, two and two. Still top of the first. Two down, one nothing is your score. Here's a pitch. Another high one. And we're full. What's our pitch count so far, Raj? Foster sets. Gets the pitch he wants. Full 30, count. 31 pitches. Here's a pitch. Swing. Foul right back to us. So Jamison Morton stays alive in this at-bat. 32 pitches in the first inning, guys. That's a lot that's, of pitches. That, that is, is a lot. lot. I think if I'm Waverly right here, you know, I'm telling Morton to kind of right now with two outs, get it on the ground and let's score another time mm -hmm. before we get out of this inning. Here's a pitch and a deep oh, drive a good shot. right into the gap, How and it's that? almost to the wall, it's and it's clear the bases. like a seesaw. Jamison Morton. He's going to get a double easy. Nichols goes to the plate, and he is in there. A three-run double for Jamison Morton. Wow. Cleared the bases. What a first inning. Yeah. And that's only the third hit by the Waverly Tigers. So a stand-up double for Jamison Morton clears the bases. Four-nothing is your score. Armstrong coming to the plate. Got another visit by the coach. That's I believe gonna be it. that's going to be it for that young man. So while we uh, change pitchers, let's go ahead and patronize our fine sponsors here on 100.1 at WXZQ. We'll be back in one minute. You're listening to the Welcome Back. New pitcher for the Circleville Tigers is number, number six. six. Did they not provide us with? That might be on me. It's probably on the on the uh, card they gave us. Let me look and see. It's on Raj. No. No, that's my fault. That's on me. That's on me. Uh, Northam. I think that's how you pronounce that. Yeah, that's Nor it must be Northam. Yeah. Okay. Well. New pitcher in the ball game. So they got to the starter early. Did the Waverly Tigers? Ran him out after about, what, 35, 36 pitches. Yeah. His day is done. I don't know if he went into the field. Can't really tell uh, from this viewpoint. Um, I think he's in the dugout, Mike. I think that's where I saw him trot into. All right. Well, that's what we're doing down in Pike County. Wanted to let you all get a little taste of that. If you haven't gotten to see some of the live broadcasts, uh, Dylan here working very hard and a lot of other folks here working hard behind the scenes um, to make sure that they can bring those live games to you, both on the radio and uh, also here on Main Street TV uh, as well. And um, very, very cool stuff that they're doing. Now, speaking of baseball, um, of course, Dan and Pete doing our Jackson Ironman baseball games right here in our little hometown. So wanted to head on over that way and show you a little bit about what they're doing there with the live games from the Jackson Ironman. So let's head on over to Dan and Pete. First out's huge. Two runners in scoring position. One two pitch coming from Williams. Curveball stays up high and away. Ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Hillsboro 0 and 9, uncharacteristic 0 and 9 to start the season. Probably 0 and 4 in the conference. I didn't ask that question. I should have. Williams fakes a throw to second, but there's nobody back there to catch it. Infielders playing straight away right now. There's the one two pitch, and there's Whoa. a hard grounder by Campbell and into right field. In to score is Greer. Let's see, Zach Brown, they will hold him at third base. And so Nate Lane with a with a hard single by the second baseman, Campbell, and Hillsborough has got their first run, and the inning is continuing now as they try to get back in the game. It's now 4-1. to one. Brown is over at third base. Lane at first, still nobody out. They've hit the ball hard the two times. Neither one, either one, both were able to find a 
hole in the uh, infield to get through, but hit pretty hard. So you've still got him first and third and nobody out. Walker Pence is the catcher. He grounded out to McGraw at third back in the first inning. How big was it for the leadoff hitter to strike out and beat out the throw down to first base right. to get this, you know, this inning started? And there is a throw down to second base, and it gets, uh, it hits the ground and gets by the shortstop Simons and in the score. Uh, the second run is Zach Brown going over to third is Lane, and uh, that is going to go down as an error on the second baseman. Uh, bounced in front of Simons there, and that allowed the run to score and allowed Lane to go all the way around the third base. So it's now 4-2. to two. See Morgan Williams, assistant coach for the Ironman for Coach McGraw. He'll take a walk out, actually be talking to his pitcher, starting pitcher, and his son. Settle him down a little bit here. Right, Ironman was still a two-run lead, but Hillsborough has scored two to cut the lead in half, and they've got the next run sitting over there on third base with nobody out. The count to Walker Pence is one ball and no strikes. That pitch was called a ball. So Hillsborough showing some life here in the third inning on the second time through the order. Swing and a miss, nice fastball. Two balls and one strike. Williams sh shakes off Ernst three times. Let's see what he's gonna throw. Had in mind what he wants. Looks like a curve ball, stays up high, ball three. Three balls and one strike. He definitely wanted the curve, didn't he? he that's what he wanted. A lot of red out on the field today as Hillsboro is red and white also. In there for called strike two as. If you're not watching the stream, Hillsboro wears the red jersey with the white pants. The Ironmen are white and white. That fastball called strike makes the count three and two to Pence. Pitch swing and a miss, and that's a big out on the number three hitter. Williams gets strikeout number six at a key time there. Lane, of course, still sits there down there at third base, but now there is one out, and here is Braden Hunter. Bats to the right side, and he had a single back in the second inning. He's got a chance for an RBI opportunity here as the cleanup hitter. Got two runs in, still looking at your fourth and fifth hitter in the lineup here for Hillsboro. Fastball looked pretty good, and it is called strike one. He might have been looking for a curveball and got a fastball. That stayed on his shoulder. Here's your 0-1 pitch. Another fastball hit on the ground to the shortstop, Simons. He's going to make the throw over to first. It does get the run in. Nate Lane scores. Simons was playing back, elected to go over to first base, and Lane scores the third run. But Hunter is retired on the grounder to, to the uh, shortstop, and so now Hillsborough has cut the lead to 4-3, to three, but there's nobody left on base, and there's two outs. Nick Burns took a called strike three back in the second inning. And the first pitch to him is ball one. He rushed for around 1,500 yards this year for Hillsboro. He was the heart of their offense on the football field. He bats fifth for him on the baseball. Right, I Diamond. Believe, I believe he played defense for them too. Linebacker spot. There was some pretty good running backs in the league this past year. Yeah, there was a pretty good one out there in center field for Jackson. Right, uh, and even with uh, some very good running backs with uh, uh, outstanding yardage, Cade Wolford gets the FAC Player of the Year award. Ends up first team All-State later on. There's the pitch, up high, ball two. two that ball award two. was a no-brainer, no Editor Pete. Absolutely not. And that's with him not playing in a lot of quarters, especially within, within the league. When and the Ironman had big leads. Right, there's called strike on the 2-0 pitch, two balls and one strike. Cade, of course, heading to Kent State University to play college football. There's the 2-1 pitch, and there's a was line a drive into hit. center field by Nick Burns. He didn't look very good on his first at bat, but he did on that one, and the inning will continue. Uh, remember, Hillsborough had emptied the bases there, 
uh, on that last ground out for an RBI, and so Burns becomes the first base runner. One thing After about that, it, they've made Tucker throw a lot of pitches here also in the top of the third inning. And uh, Zach Berwinkle stands up. He got on on a walk the first time. He bats from the left side. Pitch is called strike one. Three base hits in the inning for Hillsburg. It all started on a strikeout that got that first runner on. And that has certainly contributed to the Ironman's problems in this inning. Pitch is called strike two to Burwinkle. So Williams one out away from ending this third inning where Hillsborough has definitely got back in the game. And there is a ground ball back at Williams. Bounces off his glove. It's going to die behind him. He didn't see where it went. And so that ball was hit pretty hard. All right, well, there you go. Another fun taste of some of the great things Total Media is doing here. Um, and also want to thank, uh, you know, all of the folks behind the scenes to put those games on. Um, so Dylan and I were just talking off the air. Um, those Jackson Ironman baseball games you can see on Total Media's Facebook and YouTube channel um, live. And, of course, you can go back and watch them as well. Um, and then Pike uh, County Baseball and also those bass fishing tournaments that you get to watch. Uh, you can watch right here live on Main Street TV and, of course, the YouTube channel as well. So very, very cool. Um, and want to thank everybody for bringing those to us because uh, there's a lot of work behind the scenes to do that. And uh, it's really, really cool to get to showcase those kids doing all of the, the things that they're so talented uh, doing. So, all right. Well, we have to get out of here for the day. We appreciate you tuning in. Don't forget the Rotary uh, the Rotary Show this coming weekend, uh, Friday night, Saturday night at Wellston High School. And uh, admission, only $2 if you want those assigned seats, uh, $10 uh, charge and you get snacks included in that. So can't beat that. All right. Well, have a great day, everyone. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.